Hello everyone and welcome back to Jack Scraps. Thanks for joining me today for another part of this stacked envelopes tutorial. And in this video, we will be creating the items that are on the inside of the envelopes. So let's get started. What I thought we'd do at this point would be to work on some of the pieces that are gonna go on the inside of the envelope and leave the decorating of the top to last. So one of the things that I've done already is created this little vase with a floral. This um, mason jar is a journaling card from the My Story journaling card set from My Mind's Eye. I love this. It has a peachy pink and I thought it went pretty good with this collection. And then I fussy cut out one of the florals from the Mother's Day collection. I cut a little uh, slit here at the top, put the flower down in there, and then I added coffee dyed paper on the back side so that you could write here or even add a photo. And then I added this little sticker that says moments. And I think that's adorable. I'm loving that so much. And that fits in our second pocket here. For the fourth envelope, I thought I would do a card. I thought that would be a nice thing to put in there. And it is kind of a Mother's Day card, but you know, this gift isn't specific to Mother's Day. I think this could be something created all year round but I did want to use this beautiful word art here and this image, which I absolutely love. It kind of reminds me of Jane Austen. And I cut this out and it measures four and three fourths by six and three fourths. And then I fussy cut the word out of the cut apart page. My card base, is 10 by 7. I scored in half at 5 and then you end up with a 5 by 7 card base. And so I'm going to add this on here. I thought about also adding another color, but there's so much color going on here. I don't know. I'm not going to do it. So this will be our card. I don't know where my adhesive tape is, so I'm just gonna use regular art glitter glue. As there are flowers coming up out of the bottom of this, I thought it might be good to add this pink vine decorative trim. This is from Merchant 41 Hobby Lobby. And add that here as if it is coming out as well. Kind of like that. I think I want to trim this top here. Okay, I like that. And then I have my word mother here, putting it up pretty high. But I wanted to add some lace to this. And I thought about using this. This is Wyla by The Spool. Got this at Joann's. I love it. I have it in this color as well as white. And tuck that underneath the word like that somehow. I think that would be cute. Just not sure how. Okay, for the mother's part, I've added the lace 
all the way around on the back. I put down uh, foam dots first and then attached it to the foam dot. And now I just added art glitter glue around it. And I'm going to stick this down. So the foam adhesive is grabbing and we'll hold it down while the art glitter glue dries. And that will be our card. I love it. Love the dimension on that. I like adding the fabric to it. Now the only thing I may have done different would be to um, add cardstock to the back of the word mother to make it a little bit firmer. But otherwise, I'm liking it. Okay, so that will go into the fourth envelope here. Just got to be careful when you put it in there. And it slips right in there. So as you add things, it puffs it up, all the envelopes, and I love that part. So yeah, I think that's great. For the largest envelope, I thought I would create like a little um, paper pad, but it'll have loose papers and, you know, you can flip up and use it, tear them out, whatever you want. I don't know what that's called just a little paper stack kind of thing. And what I'm using for the base is one of those green hanging file folders. I love those to craft with, they're awesome. So I cut down a piece that is eight and three fourths by five and just slightly over three fourths. I put my two holes there and then I punched holes in all the papers that I selected. I picked a little pink um, writing tablet paper. I have some coffee dyed paper, one of the green um, drywall papers, I think it is. <laughs> a little ledger. This is um, some parchment paper. I did some tea dyeing on the grid. This is part of the collection. This is just a gray and white kind of striped paper that I picked up. I love it. I don't use it very often though. Here's some more tea dye, coffee dye, a piece from the collection. I love this one. Look at the laces. So pretty. Gorgeous. And then I found this in a book that I, it was like a notebook I bought from the Dollar Tree and it had this gorgeous photo in it. And I thought this would be perfect to be on top. So that's how I'm going to create this. I'm going to use some of the seam binding as a closure to tie it all together. Now I would say just make your holes any way that you want them. I put mine fairly close together because of the sizes of the cut cutoffs that I was using. But if you're not using cutoffs, you could make it further apart. I think this is a fun thing to do. It's great for the recipient because then they can just use this as like a little notepad. There we go. And this is the seam binding from my design team package that I received. Thought this would be pretty.
Now I was looking for a little charm that I could hang as a dangle from the bow, but I came across the Sunny Days Charms from Crepe Paper. And this one with the green and pink is so adorable, but they're sticky on the back. So I thought that might be perfect because if you attach a dangle to the bow and you want to add or replace the pages, you have to untie everything and you'd have to remove the charm. But with this, you could just put it underneath like it's hanging from the ribbon. Let's see if I can get it in the middle here. And then it would look like it's hanging. <laughs> what do you think of that? I mean, you could still attach this charm with the ribbon, but this way you don't have to worry about it. I don't know. This bow is driving me crazy. And then I thought about using these stickers from the Dollar Tree. Okay, next I'm going to work on the craft envelope here. And what I decided to do was create like a little matchbox that would open up and have photos instead of just paper. So what I have here is a 10 and 3 fourths inch piece of cardstock. Let me get my scoreboard so I can tell you where I've scored this. Okay, so we're going to score this at one and a fourth and six and a fourth. And then I've cut out some transparencies. So what I did was I took transparency film, I added glitter to the inside and then ran it through my laminator and got these, I love it. I have a video on this. If I remember, I'll have that link down below for you in case you haven't seen this technique and it will show you how to create those. So I cut out four of these and these measure three and a half by four and a half and I've rounded the edges of the top, not the bottom because it's not gonna matter. And these four pieces are going to be tucked into the one and a fourth inch fold there. And we're going to staple them in. So I've stapled them about a fourth of an inch up, maybe a little bit more. And now you have what is called a matchbook because this gets folded down in there. Now, if you find that this bubbles up, then just cut a little bit of this off. Yeah, so you would just cut off the ends here. If this bubbles up here, let's say you try to put it down and it's bubbling up, you trim this edge here that goes down into your holder. Yeah, I think that looks good. What else I did was I went on my Cricut and I cut out some frames. And I'm going to add these to each of the four sheets that I have here. Hmm. So I see we should score these so that they fold down easier. I wasn't thinking about that when I put them in here, but that's easily to be fixed. So I'm going to alternate a square and then a round one square and a round one. And I just think that would be kind of cool. 
and I save the innards so that whoever gets this can use these as a template and cut out the centers of their photos to be added here. And then I was even thinking about adding little tabs to the top. So that's my thought process and I'm gonna get started. Okay, now we're going to work on the small envelope. And what I did was cut out this piece of cardstock using my Cricut Maker. And this measures six and a half by two and 13, 16. So you could probably, you could probably go up to two and seven eighths, but I wouldn't go any bigger because I wanted to have, you want to have room on each side of the envelope to get this in. And the image that I uh, chose to cut, cut out these little lines so that you could put a photo in there. And I shrunk the original image uh, so that it would fit in the envelope. So it only gave me room for this little bitty image. And I cut this from the cover sheet for the collection. So here's the cover sheet and I just cut that out right down here. So those are always good to use as well. Then what I did was I found some Prima Ephemera that I had from Poetic Rose. I never did get the paper but I picked these up at Tuesday morning and I picked out a few pieces. I like this one that said beauty. And then I have this one that is like a little clipboard. And I thought these would be fun to include. Now the size of this image is one and seven eighths by one and three sixteenths. Um, it's a little bit over one and one eighth, but that's what I found to fit. So I just put that in there, I inked it up. Again, I'm using Vintage Photo, and I thought I would close this up so that it's just a little flip and add the beauty to the front and have this on the inside paper here, like that. Just a little flip. I'm only adding glue around where the holes are so that the image could be changed if whoever received this wanted to change it. Because you could use this as a template and then cut out another image. So 
So there we have it, a little flip with a removable photo spot. And let's put that into our little envelope. How cute is that? It fits right in there. Doink. There we go. Now, as you see, the top envelope is flipping up. So I'm going to use a little Velcro dot to close that. And I actually did the same thing for the brown one because it was making it way too puffy. So there we go. Yeah, that's fine. And then we have one more envelope to fill. So let's work on that. The next thing I wanted to do was to create uh, like a cabinet card. And so I found this photo frame in Cricut Design Space and this measures nine and three-fourths by ten and three-eighths and then of course you fold in half and it had this great little cutout here so that you could put your photo in there. So ultimately I'll be gluing it down here and up here leaving the top open to slide in your photo. But if you are familiar with cabinet cards from Tim Holtz, you know that they have gold around them. They have different shapes cut out in the center. I have the red ones as well as the black. And then they have like some script writing on the back, probably from the photo um, place that they got them taken or something like that. And then they have nice little edging going on there. So that's what I was trying to reproduce. Now this is a linen paper, so I am a little concerned, um, but I have a little piece here that I'm going to do some testing. One of the first things I did was went to find some stamps and I thought this would be super cute. Maybe up here in the corners. I found this one that has some nice script on it. I was thinking we could probably, I could probably use that on the back side maybe. Or I have another one right here. And then there's some other little decorative pieces that I could use going around the image in the center. I saw that, I thought that was super cute. As well as maybe put this on the back side also. I really like that to be down here at the bottom or maybe even at the top and then put one of the text things in the center. That would be kind of cute. So these are, a, you know, I have a myriad of stamps from Bo Bunny. We have My Mind's Eye. We have Hampton Arts. And this actually came from AliExpress. And then this one, I don't even know where that came from. But what I picked out for stamp colors was this Brilliance Galaxy Gold Memento Lux Wedding Dress, and then I have the Cloud White. I wanted to see which would be better on here, white or gold. I'm hoping the gold so that it would be more like a cabinet card. <laughs> so let's try this little one here. I haven't used this stamp pad in forever. I don't even know if it works. Well, it does make a mark, but it doesn't really look gold at all. Okay, let's try this cloud white. Oh, that works. Okay, that's good. And then the wedding dress, that one might be better. Let's try that. Yeah, it seems a little bit whiter. Let me try this again. Yeah, 
yeah, it's definitely whiter. So we have that one. And then I have one more gold one that I can try. It's a no, like I don't think it's a real name brand. This might be from Target or something. <laughs> Watch it work. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it is working. Look how great that is. Hmm, I know the white is clear and you can see it, but a cabinet card has the gold around it. So I really wanted to do that. So that's what I'll be using. And again, I think this is just a cheapo from Target. <laughs> So this next one I have taken from the Romance Stamps by Bo Bunny. Thought it might be cute to put that right there. Okay, so there it is. Now I don't mind at all that some of this didn't turn out very gold because it gives it the aged look that I was kind of looking for. But I do like how that turned out, looking like a cabinet card. So let's go ahead and put this together. Oh, I just remembered one of the things I thought about doing was putting some of the pattern paper back there. Maybe we'll just do a cutout and add that. I did notice that that gold kind of smears or flakes, I guess it would be a better word. Now that I think about it, there's gold all the way around the cabinet card. So I'm just going to use this directly onto it. Making kind of some big smears, because that's kind of how it was. I hope you can see all that. And I think there were lines between the four corner pieces down, so I might try to do that as well. So this is Bo Bunny Stitches Stamp. It's the only one with a straight line, but is a stitched line. Thinking if I press hard enough, it will become one. Now, some of this isn't coming out perfect, and I'm okay with that because this is supposed to be like a shabby chic kind of project. Okay, now that looks more like a cabinet card. I love the gold around it. I love the lines in between there, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I want it to be aged. Yeah, I like that a lot. For the inside, I'm going to use a four by six cut apart. I think we could just slip this down in there and then whoever gets it can always change it. And I cut out one of the little girls that's in the collection. And I thought maybe, you know, she could be just partially on here. Because of the image, you didn't get two legs or two hands, so maybe if we cut this part off, that would look good. <laughs> it's like she's reaching for the rose. <laughs> So 
So I had to cut off about a half an inch because she was being hidden. And I want it to show through. Even if it is just a little bit. Okay, so there we have our cabinet card. And we'll add that to our last pocket here. So the last thing I want to add to my envelopes is an actual letter. And what I found in my electronic stash was a poem written for Miss Mary L. Jacobs album by A.G. Archer, Emery, I think, or no, Henry, A.G. Archer Henry. So he wrote this poem and I'm just gonna fold that up. I printed this off on my computer using Epson paper and I even printed a coffee dyed paper on the back so that it would look, you know, like it came from that period. And then I inked it up with vintage photo. I'm gonna add it here where we have the little flower piece. Thought that would be a good pocket for it. Yeah, fits in there, perfect. So we have created something for every pocket and that will be the end of this tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed this part of the project.